Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Ooh, nice. Pack one, pick one, Teferi. I haven't been able to draft a fairy yet in Dominaria draft, so this is a first for me. Yeah, let's uh, take the fairy, and then is there anything we can hope to wheel? Memorial to Genius, Sergeant at Arms, or one of these draw spells. I'm known for my excellent timing. And second pack, how about a Mirari Conjecture? Build a nice blue-white control deck. Don't mind if I do. Other good cards in the pack, Quende in white as well. Some okay green cards, Sapper, Spider, and then Red. All these are fine, but Conjecture it is. Yeah, Time of Ice is a decent card. Although if we're gonna try and build a control deck, maybe I prefer Deep Freeze. Deep Freeze not really a combo with Conjecture or Teferi especially. But it is removal, and if we're gonna build a control deck looking to leverage Conjecture into various powerful draw engines, then we just want to make sure we can survive long enough. So I don't hate the idea of Deep Freeze over Time of Ice. Yeah, there's some other powerful red cards. Green seems relatively open so far. Blessed Lights, another Time of Ice, Evra. But it's not a bomb, necessarily, it still trades off most of the time, unless you can equip it somehow. So I might prefer the Blessed Lights. It's also an instant, so I can get it back with Conjecture. Teferi can untap two lands and let me cast it at instant speed. So, let's take the Blessed Lights and then hope to wheel Opts. <laughs> eh. Am I doing this chat? I mean, it could still be okay if we get some sagas or other things with Enter the Battlefield abilities. I mean, it might not be the correct pick, which would probably be the Arcanist here. But, I mean, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, right? Could this wheel? Probably not. Someone's gonna rare draft it. Alright, I'll do it for you, chat. Snapper would have also been a nice pick up there. Don't think we want Triumph, since we're a control deck. Candle's a bit slow, but I guess combos with Teferi a little bit. There's the Explorer as a random blocker, Knight as a random 2-drop. That can trade off. Can maybe take a Befuddle later, so it's like Explorer versus Knight of New Benalia. I don't hate the idea of Knight. I mean, a 3-1 can be a good blocker if you're facing a bunch of other 2 and 3-drops from the opponent. So it can just trade off. Ooh, white does seem quite open though. Seventh pick, Pegasus Courser. Great combo with the Knight of New Benalia. Deep Freeze also can fly over whatever creature we enchant. So I mean, while I would like to make this a control deck, we can still potentially have aggressive draws where we curve Knight into Pegasus Courser. So I think that's still the pick. Love me a Divination. Don't have any sorceries yet to get back with Conjecture, so that'll be the first. And we've seen a couple opts that we might wheel. So in the end, Blue-White seems to be quite open. Which is good news. Take an opt. And I'll take an Honor Guard, a random 2-drop that we can trade off. Howling Golem, also an option. But there's more random 3-drops we can get, like Sergeant at Arms, Tolarian Scholar that pretty much do the same. Take my candle now. Lance would have been better if we were more aggressive, maybe had we taken Evra over Blessed Lights, a great way to give the lifelink creature first strike, but still leaning towards a more controlling deck, take another opt over Scholar, can get more of those three drops later. Alright, so first pack went pretty great. Picked up some draw, some removal, the fairy, some nice creatures with the Pegasus Courser. And our second pack, we open a Forebear's Blade. This card's quite good. 
Now it's probably not going to be at its best in our deck, since we're going to be creature lights focused on removal spells and uh, card draw. But it's probably still the pick. Even Sentry, Drake and Sergeant would all be cards I would be happy to play. But I'll take the blade. And then... Probably looking at the Wizard's Retort. I don't have a lot of Wizards yet. In fact, I don't have any. But we might pick up some Talarian Scholars on the wheel to make this a 2-mana counterspell. Great with the Fairy untapping two lands. Love me a lot of these cards. Blink of an Eye, amazing interaction. Can play it for 2-mana with the Teferi untap. Knight of Grace is a great 2-drop. I think it's going to be Blink, just because we have the Conjecture to combo with it. We've had a draft recently where we bounced our own Conjecture a few times with the third chapter on the stack. And that's great alongside Blink, and then of course Blink plus Teferi is nice too. Also Oath of Teferi, I just realized, can combo nicely with our Conjecture, so... Now I'll take Tetsuko. Don't think I'm splashing for Wizard's Lightning. Our deck should be good enough as a two-color deck. We don't have any Skittering Surveyors to splash a third color yet. And Tetsuko is a fine two-drop. Can make some of my creatures unblockable like the Knight of Nubanalia. Now I'll take the Avon Sentry. Invoke the Divine also card we could consider as kind of our last main deck card. But uh, I'll take a Sentry. This doesn't seem like a dub deck. Urza's Tome is okay, but we've got Divinations instead for card draw. It's a lot of Jodas. So here I have to decide between another Opts and maybe a Call the Cavalry. I do have a bit of room at 4, this is also sorcery, we can get back with Conjecture, and I wouldn't mind more creatures to equip my Forebear's Blade. So, yeah, I'll take the call here. <laughs> the Antiquities. Not gonna have enough artifacts to make this a reliable card in our deck. But I guess there's no other options, I'm not gonna play Healing Grace or... Probably not going to play Relic Runner, I guess it's kind of okay with Tetsuko. Got a few ways to trigger it. Ah, sure, I'll take it. Don't think I'm splashing Rona. Don't have any sorceries, the legendary sorceries that would require Rona, and once again we don't really have the fixing. This is a pretty stacked pack. Sentinel can be nice with Sagas. But don't have too many of those. So it's between Opt, Drake, and Syncopate. Um, Syncopate would be fine in this deck. I think I'll just take the Drake to have an extra flying creature to go with my equipment. We did wield the Sergeant. So that's another nice pickup. And... I don't think this pick matters too much. I guess I'll take my first Disciple. And the Trapper wields too. Alright, so our deck is shaping up nicely. Invoke the Divine could be playable too in this deck. Last pack, hoping to get maybe another Blink, maybe another Blessed Light, some more removal in general. Seal Away would be great. Although I will take a Shalai. Even without a green ability, it's still a totally fine card. Definitely beats Syncopate here. So if I had to make some cuts, the candle probably doesn't make it. Set of Disciple, maybe Relic Runner. Got a lot of options at 3 mana. But they're all pretty decent. Can maybe cut the Invoke. And everything else seems fine. So, yeah, could use one or two extra 2-drops. 
and a bit more interaction. Well then, Quende, do we have any creatures with first strike? We did not pick up that Knight of Grace. And we don't have a Lance, so... I mean, Quende is still an okay card, especially with a Forebear's Blade. But it's not at its best in this deck. I think I prefer Pegasus Corsair. Even the Arcanists, although that one might wheel. Yeah, let's take Corsair. I've got a decent amount of creatures that I wouldn't mind giving flying. Yeah, Quende is still playable at 4 mana, just by itself. But I've got Avon Sentry, Call, and Shalai, so it's not like we're lacking 4 drops. Ooh, that's a gift, a Wrath. Now that one I'll definitely play. No doubt about it. And nothing here, sadly. Take a Shivan Fire, I guess, just in case. Not gonna play Tragic Poet to get back Conjecture. Ooh, nice late Skittering Surveyor. I mean, I'll still take it, even if we're not splashing. I guess I did just take that Shivan Fire. So maybe if I get a second Surveyor this late, I can splash it, but. Yeah, Scholar would be okay, because we have that Wizard's Retort, but that's the main reason to do it. Uh, Memorial would also be nice to add to the mana base, makes it easier to play 18 lands. But I still like the Surveyor just getting me a lands, because we do have some expensive kicker cards in the deck. So I'm still happy enough just with a 1-2 that searches up a land. This is a bit of a blank. And I'll take an Adamant Will, although I don't know if I'll play it. Yeah, we have a Sergeant at Arms, Academy Drake. Both with Kicker, Four Bears Blade can be pretty man intensive. So getting extra lands in this deck doesn't seem like a bad deal. And I can also blink it with Oath of Teferi to get an extra land. If we're gonna play Oath, that's still up for debate. Hmm, do I need a Snapper as a win condition? A need is maybe a strong word. It would be okay. But I don't think I'm lacking win conditions with Double Courser, Shalai, Wrath. But could be a decent blocker. Alright, nothing here. So what are my last couple cuts? Maybe the Adamant Will. Couple threes can maybe go. The Trapper. Or the Sergeants. Gotta play all the two drops just to have enough early blockers. And then how am I doing in terms of instants and sorceries for Conjecture? I didn't end up with a ton of them. So instance we have Opt, Adamant Will, Blink, Blessed Lights. And so Retorts, and then sorceries I have Divination, Call the Cavalry, and that's it. So... Is Conjecture still worth it? Yeah, probably. But it's close. I can also play it at instant speed with Wrath, which is kind of nice. The Deep Freeze looks okay since we have so many flying creatures and unblockable creatures with Tetsuko. I think the Adamant Will can go since we've got so many evasive creatures and there's no creature I care about too much. And then I probably cut the Sergeant at Arms as my weakest 3-drop. Although there's definitely matchups where I would rather want a 2-3 ground creature than a 2-2 two -two flyer. But we've got Double Courser that blocks well. This seems okay. Plenty of flying with Double Courser, Avon Sentry, Shalai, Wrath. 
The sniper is just mostly a good blocker on the ground that's difficult for the opponent to get rid of. Oath of Teferi, of course, kind of a meme to go with our Teferi, but it can also reset Surveyor to get an extra land and reset my Conjecture, which is kind of nice. And it can also potentially save a creature that's underneath an enchantment removal spell like Deep Freeze. Alright, this seems fine. And then 17 lands with double opt, divination, and surveyor should be okay. Our curve isn't incredibly high. No green mana. Shalai is double green, so with only one surveyor I would need to play too many forests to have it be worth it. If Shalai was single green, then you could convince me to play a couple forests, but yeah, it's just not worth it. Alright, the fairy tribal, and then the mana distribution. It's pretty even between blue and white. Probably give blue the uh, edge here, because we have Retort that's double blue and the opts we want to be able to cast early. So 9-8 seems fine. Alright, let's give this a try. On the play. No white mana just yet, but I can play a Drake and a Blade in the meantime, and of course it's a fairy if we can ever get to it. Up against black green could be a sapperling synergy deck. So if I played a blade I could equip next turn, but it still doesn't line up against the one ones. So we'll just play the Drake. Opponent's stuck on two. So I'll send in Drake and then probably just play the blade. Could also kick the blink just to draw land for Teferi. Although if I can keep the blink until after we play Teferi, that's maybe even better because that's a nice way to protect him. Vicious Offering takes out my Drake. And another Migration. Alright then. Well, we cast the Fairy in our very first game. Although, didn't get to see it much in action. Alright, we've got the Surveyor plus Oath combo, gotta keep. Let's play Honor Guard. Hits a little bit harder than Tetsuko if they don't have a 2-drop. Ooh, Atlas. That is a scary card. But shall I can block it? So they can equip Black Blade now. So I guess shall I no longer blocks it. So I will need to find an actual removal spell. So if I play Shalai, it also pumps the Honor Guard. I mean, it's definitely better than playing Oath here. I mean, my opponent is at 8, so... We are threatening a lethal. But they do have removal for Shalai. Take 8. 
And a four bearers blade, does that do it? Five, six, seven, eight. Should be exaxes. Well, we had a couple of outs, drawing another flying creature, but if we can draw the blade and win, that's even better. Fine hands. Let's get in for two. Probably play Surveyor for now, since we could use an extra land. Alright, do I just kick this blink to get in for three? Yeah, I don't hate it. Also makes their next turn kind of awkward if they don't have a 4-drop. And Wrath is an excellent draw. Could also main phase Wrath if we're afraid of an opposing counter spell. But what I can do is attack with the Honor Guard. And if they block, Wrath will pump it, so I'll trade for Sergeant. And actually, I'll probably just play Wrath anyway, even if they didn't block, just to get in the one extra damage. Using Wrath as a combo trick. And we all know what this Opt is digging for. I think we can do better than Pegasus Courser. Although Pegasus Courser wouldn't be bad. Alright, land means I can play Snapper, so that's fine. I'm okay racing with my opponent at 15. And Bear is going to slow us down a little bit. So all Divination, see what we find. Call the Cavalry is not going to do much here, so... Um, now the problem is if I attack with a Snapper, opponent can just double block and I only get to kill Baird. Which is not a great deal. So I'd probably just attack with Baird, play Drake. This can block, so that seems fine. Maybe should have played Drake first to play around Syncopate for one and then attacked. I'll take it. Alright, so a little bit of flood, but that's fine. So Wrath and Drake attack. Play call. And I don't really care if this gets countered or not. Let's 
Something like an Ursa's Ruinous Blast would be bad. It's gonna be Journey Mage Bouncing Wrath. That could have been a reason to not play Call and just keep up 4 mana. But we're still in great shape here. If nothing changes. And I think I'll main phase Wrath to play around a counter spell. Opponent didn't seem to have any answers to Wrath the turns prior, so... Uh, sure, I'll take two. Could also potentially attack with everyone, although it doesn't seem necessary. Sure. All right. Fine hands. We mentioned it during the draft. Turn two knight, turn three Pegasus Courser. Definitely a nice start. Hello there. And then, if my opponent does nothing impactful, I'll probably sit on a retort instead of playing the second courser. Since it doesn't add a significant amount of power to the board. Alright, Academy Drake can trade for my knights. So I don't hate bouncing it. And get us closer to lands uh, 5 for Teferi. Conjecture with Blink is also nice. Opponents on the back foot. There are three colors. And a short sword. Well, I can just play Teferi and Minus on the Drake. But they're probably going to trade for knights, and I think I'm happy with that, and then we just start plussing with the fairy. Could also keep Pegasus Courser back in case they don't trade. But if they don't trade... I guess I could still decide to Teferi minus on the drake. Uh, haste creatures could be annoying if they have like another instant or sorcery into a lava runner. Could also still just uh, plus the fairy here, of course. This is a close call. I think I will plus. Keep up the pace. Something like an Onsara's Wings could be bad here, because I don't have a great answer for it. I guess Conjecture can get back Blink eventually. Ah, Teferi still seems alive and kicking, so that's great news. We need to move quickly. And then I can play Conjecture, get back Blink and have Blink up thanks to Teferi. So let's do that first to see if this resolves, because if it doesn't, I might keep the Courser back. Um, although I might do that anyway. Could also just, let's see, for 6 mana, just play 2 Flyers, have the Skies covered. 
Although it would be nice to have Retort up. Now let's just play Conjecture. Try and get back Blink. And then we'll just send in Knight of Nubanalia. Alright, Trickster taps down Courser, trades there. But we have the option of blinking the Drake or using Wizard's Retort. Three, three Drake, Conjecture ticks up. So next turn that's gonna double everything. Let's skip to the good part. No shortage of flying creatures. Opponents at ten. So I do want to leave myself with three mana for retorts, which means. I can go sentry plus two drop, but I guess just playing sentry is fine. Can even pay for syncopates. Definitely okay trading. Double block would be reasonable to play around so plus one plus one effects. Befuddle, I'm happy enough countering. And try and spike like an opt or a divination here that we get to double with conjecture. <laughs> Ah, achievement unlocked. You know what? I'm not oh wow, we're just going off chat. Oh yes. I could have even cast opt at instant speed with the two lands we untapped from Teferi. But come on, I gotta do this. So let's see, this comes back at the beginning of the next end step. So I guess I'll just blink a land here. Plus again. And we'll just stay back. It's a lot of triggers. Ultimate incoming. Gotta be careful that I don't deck myself first. <laughs> nice. Alright, alright, I see how it is. It's only fair, it's only fair. Blessed lights. I mean, we gotta get to ultimate. Now, if I draw into maybe an equipment here, I can finish off their Teferi. So let's Divination, see if we can find one. Although I guess I wouldn't have the mana to play and equip anymore. All right. Yeah, I guess now they get to minus the ferry on my to ferry, but that's fine. Just play some more creatures here. I probably should have been less greedy and just minus on their to ferry to begin with. That was uncalled for. Let's 
play some creatures out. Not quite enough mana for Blessed Lights, but... Alright, they're gonna blink my Teferi instead. Discard to hand size. 13 cards remaining. And a kick to Varig's Blade Wing. All right, my opponent's not messing around. And a candle. All right, so how do we want to handle this? The fairy can plus and minus. So let's start here. Plus. Raph is nice too. Minus on the token. Don't make another move. My Teferi's gonna die. But then we should be able to take care of their Teferi, still have plenty of action in hand. And I don't have many relevant cards left to draw in my deck anyway. I've got a Shalai left and a Snapper and that's about it. Alright, Pwn is definitely putting up a fight here. They've got some nice rares. But I should be able to take care of Teferi at long last. So we can Blessed Light, Juda, and then Tetsuko. Although I don't even need Tetsuko. Opponent has 18 cards to my 10. Could also just flash in Wrath end of turn. I suppose that's how it was meant to happen. Missed out on one damage potentially. But they could have had some interaction, I guess. Alright, opponent's finally out of cards. They still have a candle and double memorial to genius, so... Play a kick Drake. And if they block with Blade Wing, I could flash in Tetsuko to ambush, but a trade is fine by me. And then I guess I'll pass. And I can flash in the Surveyor too. I have nine cards remaining. Yeah, I probably didn't play this game perfectly. Got a little bit greedy with uh, Teferi. Could have tucked their Teferi sooner and then maybe try to save my Teferi a little bit better. But we should still comfortably win this. I was too excited with the Oath. Hmm. 
What do we have left? Snapper, Blade, Shall I? So we still have some goodies left. And both Tetsuko with Corsair and Surveyor, as well as Raph, are lethal. Opponent's gonna go digging. Time of Ice. Almost would have been good enough. And there we go. Alright. So it didn't play perfectly, but it was definitely a fun and exciting game with a lot of twists and turns. And we got the achievement unlocked of Oath plus the Fairy, so can't complain. Looks good. Let's see if we can find a two drop. Um, not really the two drop I had in mind. We have Blessed Light for interaction. And I'm maybe not capable of kicking it. We've got two other four drops. So, seems like a fine card to bottom for now. It's a pretty nice card to find. So if we can keep the board stable, put some creatures in play to protect the fairy, then we should have a nice time once we do resolve it. Opponent on blue reds, so typically a wizard deck. We've got our lands for Teferi lined up. Just gotta decide which four drop to play first. Yeah, I just tapped full control here, give him something to think about at least. Don't have to overdo it, but every now and then be a little sneaky. Um, so I don't really care if they counter any one of these. I think I would rather have them counter the sentry as opposed to the call. Of course, I could have their own flyer that I then can block with call, but call just gives me more bodies to throw in front of any block or any attackers to protect the fairy, whereas sentry just dies to the one removal spell. Sure. So I'm pretty happy with that exchange. I might still play Call before Teferi just to make sure we can protect him properly. Ouch, that's what I didn't want to see. So now I'm probably forced to Blessed Light Atlas before we do anything else, because that just represents too much damage otherwise. And hope they don't have a second copy somehow. Sphinx, that's a good one. So yeah, Teferi minus means we still lose Teferi to the Arcanists. Teferi plus leaves him at one. But that might be the play. Just get the Teferi out there, hope he doesn't die right away. And then I can hope to find an answer for Sphinx next turn, my own flyer. I've got a couple of those. Of course, we did put that blink of an eye on the bottom, so that's not a card we can draw here. So yeah, flying creatures are an issue with this hand. Although it's not like the sentry would have been much more useful. And then what would be a good draw besides a flying creature or removal? I guess just like a snapper to apply a bit of pressure. You're not going to win this. Arctic Wanderer, that's a big boy. 
All right, we'll need some help. We need to move quickly. Conjecture can get back Blessed Lights. No sorcery, but don't have a ton of those. I guess call, but that's going to be too late. So maybe it's still worth it to call first just to get that in the graveyard. And then Teferi will sadly die here. But then we have Conjecture to get back Blessed Light to kill the Sphinx and then to get back Call. And then I can maybe wait until the third chapter to play Call to get four Knight tokens. Opponent's got three cards left, so... Yeah, it's still anyone's game. If they've got some good ones, we could be in trouble. Second Sphinx. Yeah, I would count that as a good one. It's a ferry down. I'll have a better plan next time. No great attacks. Could also maybe wait until the third chapter to play Blessed Lights. Exile both copies of Sphinx. Depends how much pressure we're under. Would be pretty sweet to cast double Blessed Light and double Call the Cavalry. But yeah, that's the power of Mirari Conjecture. And that's why I prioritized the Call the Cavalry so much. So last turn they didn't attack with the Pardic Wanderer, because we could trade off on the ground. But Journey Mage maybe changes that. Could still technically triple block, wouldn't be so bad for me. But they have a fight with fire as well. Alright, so I can't block the Wanderer profitably. I'm taking 11 down to 3, so yeah, that's quite bad here, I'm probably just dead. Yeah, didn't quite have a stable enough board to protect the ferry, couldn't find a flying creature in time. There were a few turns where we untapped lands with the ferry. But uh, our deck is pretty light on counter spells and instants we can play with the mana from Teferi. That's why an extra blink or like a seal away would have been perfect. Or even a Gideon's Reproach. I don't think we saw any reproaches in the draft. Alright, we're on the draw. A reasonable hand. Scattering Surveyor. Goes well with our Tetsuko. Deciding what uh, three drop they want to play. Decides to just pass a turn instead. Uh, if they're keeping up a counter spell, I'll give them Surveyor instead of Pegasus Corsair. They didn't seem to be holding anything. So let's just uh, play call and then next turn I can be mana efficient, play both cards out. Tetsuko 
Time of Ice. Alright. So that can essentially trade for my Call the Cavalry. Oath of the Fairy plus Scattering Surveyor. Wombo Combo. Although for now, probably still prioritize playing my creatures. Alright, so we're in a bit of trouble now without any flying creatures, although there's no lack of flying creatures in our deck. I guess Oath can free the Courser, that's probably a better use of my Oath. And then I actually don't mind getting the Surveyor bounced by Time of Ice. That way we'll get to search up an extra land. So to get in for one damage per turn, that's not the fastest clock. Alright. I just need one more big flying creature, or just anything impactful. We have Tetsuko making our creatures unblockable, so we can still attack. Button might activate the memorial, making two one ones. So. I could send in Courser plus Honor Guard. Still have one Courser back on defense. Tetsuko can block a 2 2 token. Yeah, I think I'll do that. To try and get in a bit more damage. Now if they have some sort of Anthem effect, that's going to be bad for me. Ooh, Conjecture. That's going to be great here. Nope, <laughs> just to call the Cavalry. So not the best. I could still cast it to eventually get a bunch of tutus, but we've got so many instants that it's probably worth waiting. I'll make the same attack, nothing has really changed on the board. And as soon as we find an opts or some other instance, we can get a ton of value, so... Now if we find an instance, we go from being slightly ahead to very far ahead, thanks to the conjecture. But anything can happen. This attack is fine. I can double block a knight, I'll lose a surveyor, or I can just block block, take two. Because surveyor could be useful at getting in the last points of damage here. If they have a charge, that's bad, but if they had a charge they would have attacked with everyone probably. Or with more creatures at least.
All right, that's also unblockable thanks to Tetsuko. So we can maybe think about setting up lethal over the course of two turns. But I also gotta make sure I don't die on the way back. Maybe the Surveyor has to attack, that way I at the very least deal them two damage down to seven, and then Knights plus the four unblockables is lethal. Alright, put on double blocks, that's fine. Kill the Courser then. And now we still have lethal next turn if nothing changes. Opponent can draw with a tome, but they won't have a ton of mana left. It's uh, three to activate, I'm leaving them with two mana. So worst case scenario, they draw into like a blink or a Gideon's reproach for Tetsuko. Yeah, Tetsuko is definitely carrying us right now. They didn't leave a blue mana, so maybe they don't have blink or they didn't think about which mana to keep up. Discards lands. Yeah, I guess the Courser giving my creatures flying does mitigate the worst case scenario where Tetsuko dies. Alright, I'm blocking. I mean, I could play around a pump spell by not blocking. Because they're just dying next turn anyway. Sure. Might as well divinate in case we can find a counter spell, just to make it even safer. And I have plenty of mana to spend on Baird. So this flies. This flies. All right, sweet. So we're five and one, made our gems back, and we've got a pretty fun deck, so let's play some more games. Can't uh, say no to this. And even have the blink to play after we untap two lands with Teferi. So Fungal Infection here would be bad, but I think I still lead with Knights. Can become unblockable once we play Tetsuko. Although I could also play Honor Guard, which also gets pumped by Tetsuko on the following turn. Well, we've got all the lanes, got some nice early board pressure, <laughs> and the oath to go with the fairy, so this draw is just about perfect. And I'm happy to trade for the envoy just to get some stuff off the board. So I won't be able to play a kicked blink either way, so might as well do it now. In case I find some other two mana instants, like opts, I guess. Sure. Oh no. You need to take a time. That's unfortunate. Yeah, as it turns out, that's one of the few answers to a planeswalker in this set. And that was a reason to maybe minus on the Sphinx instead of plusing to Fairy, but 
Anything I can divinate into? I mean, I still have unblockable creatures thanks to Tetsuko to kill Teferi, but of course... Then we also don't have a Teferi anymore. Opponent is at 10, so it's not too difficult to finish them off. Yeah, Conjecture could get back the blink that's in our graveyard, or I could find Blessed Light to exile the Embolus's clutches. Those are the ways we have of getting the ferry back, potentially. But it looks like I'm just gonna have to kill the ferry instead. Alright, I mean, we're still looking good here, but uh, sadly didn't get to enjoy Oath plus the Fairy. Snapper's fine, although I wonder if playing Knights, I guess I can do both. Yeah, if I had to choose, it's possible that playing Knight was just better, since... At least that one's guaranteed unblockable. So yet another game where Tetsuko seems to be carrying us. Especially the combination of Knight of New Benalia plus Tetsuko. And our opponent concedes. Alright. Not even Bolas himself can stop us. And it's already time for the final boss. This draft went by pretty quickly. Uh, I was excited for a second. But it's just Oath of the Fairy. Yeah, this hand's a little too slow. A 5 and a 6. Counterspell. I mean, we're on the play, so the counterspell isn't as bad. But I don't think I can keep... Haven't seen Shalai much, so this seems good. I'll keep Honor Guard, get spun by Shalai, gives us something to do here. Um, I guess the white deck. Let's still play Knight, I think. Play Shalai first to pump the Honor Guard. And yeah, we've got a nice curve out draw. Blink as interaction. So I can blink one of the tokens, see what we can find. Tetsuko once again. So I don't think I attack with Knight of New Benalia. But I'm fine trading Honor Guard for the 2-2. Yeah, sure. Because if they trade, then they don't have the option of playing like an Onsera's Wings on it, which could potentially be a problem. But I want to keep the 3-1 since we have Tetsuka to make it unblockable. They might have traded for Honor Guard anyway instead of Knight of New Benalia, and I could have put them to 5 and then had lethal this turn. So, it's possible that attacking with both was still correct. But 
but they do seem to be in trouble here. Shall I protect Tetsuko? And that does it. Alright. It's kind of hard to say whether Teferi won us more games than Tetsuko, but both did an excellent job, even if Teferi betrayed us briefly. So, to no one's surprise, pack one, pick one, Teferi leads to seven wins. Let's crack some packs. I think I'm still missing a couple mythics from Dominaria. So let's see if we can find some of those. Oh, is it a wild card? It is. Alright, so just some gems. That's okay. I need to restore my gem counts after the whole jumpstart situation. So that's going to do it for me today. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.